The COVAX program backed by the WHO, the World Health Organization, will soon be delivering vaccines to some of the poorest countries. Ivan Watson was able to get an exclusive interview with the managing director of the COVAX facility and she struck an optimistic tone about their mission. Take a listen. So the COVAX facility is on track on its primary goal, which is uh, making sure that we had access um, to supply. Uh, we need about 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines uh, in 2021, uh, but it's not going to be a, a straightforward pathway um, throughout the whole year, that's for sure. The European Union was just slamming Pfizer and AstraZeneca for delays in production and in supply of vaccines. Are you seeing the agreements that are being made? Are you seeing slowdowns because of not only demand, but about unforeseen problems in production? Manufacturers are scaling up at a speed that's um, uh, uh, unprecedented. So I think we can expect that it's not going to be all smooth sailing as the vaccine manufacturing is scaled up and distribution um, happens. I think it's important for everyone to be able to be accountable um, to the commitments uh, that they've made. The head of the WHO has been quite critical about wealthier countries doing advance orders and setting back the supply of vaccines to poorer countries, to COVAX, for example. How much of a problem is that for you? In 2021, uh, we are in a situation where demand is going to outstrip uh, supply. And I mean, this is exactly the reason why COVAX uh, was created to avoid uh, a, a bidding war for vaccines. Without concerted effort, uh, lower income countries will be left behind um, because of the restrictions on their financial capabilities uh, to be able to buy vaccines. What is the budget like to provide and distribute hundreds of millions of doses of vaccine essentially for free to the world's poorest countries? We've had a uh, very, very strong endorsement uh, by uh, donors. We've been able so far to secure pledges of $6 billion from over 2020. Um, but we do need at least another $2 billion in 2021 to carry on being able to procure and also to be uh, delivering doses. The new Biden administration announced that it wanted to join the COVAX facility. What kind of an impact will that have? I, I think it's a, a very strong endorsement of the COVAX facility of the aim to have a global and multilateral approach to fair and equitable access for COVID-19 vaccines. So the very welcome news from uh, the Biden-Harris administration to join COVAX is also coupled with a very significant pledge of $4 billion, which covers the procurement of uh, COVID-19 vaccines and delivery. So a new coronavirus lockdown has also just gone into effect for much of Peru. It'll be in place for 15 days and includes Lima, the country's capital. Peru is experiencing, uh, is expecting to receive its first batch of vaccines on February the 9th, and that's not soon enough for hospitals that are certain at breaking point, as Isa Suarez now explains. Every morning, Dr. Rosa Luz Lopez looks at this list of COVID-19 patients. And wishes she didn't have to make this difficult decision. It's overwhelming. Yo lo definiría como una pesadilla. Hospital Nacional Guillermo Almenara Irigoyen in Lima, Peru, is one of the largest in the capital. Here, ICU beds have almost quadrupled, but that simply isn't enough. Yo veo una situación catastrófica y dolorosa. No es que sea alarmista, creo que soy pragmática, pero ahora que la atención es y va a ser insuficiente, por lo menos durante un par de meses, esto va a ser muy doloroso. With no space inside the main hospital, these patients are now being seen in the temporary room in the patio. Dr. López, who is the head of the intensive care unit here, shows us around. Todos están con oxígeno acá. Todos ellos están con oxígeno. Acá tienes otro grupo. Acá hay 20 más. Ahí adentro hay 25. Acá hay 20. Son 45. Back inside the ICU ward, medical staff work around the clock to meet the surging cases. 
more than 100,000 in the last month alone. Tienes gente, no, médicos, enfermeras, fisioterapeutas, técnicos, trabajando 400 horas al mes, más o menos, en sus dos lugares de trabajo. ¿De dónde les pides más? Understandably, they're beyond exhausted. O sea, por el hecho de que ya el recurso humano está, digamos, agotado, cansado, enfermo, también hay muchos colegas. Not far away from here. In the Hospital 2 de Mayo. Dr. Jesús Valverde says they only have 50 ICU beds and they're all full. But even if they had ICU beds, they wouldn't have the staff, he says. The Pandora priority is the resource human. Y en este momento ya no tenemos recursos humanos que pueda manejar una cama de cuidado intensivo. Cada colega está trabajando en dos o tres lugares en simultáneo. Como es de su conocimiento... La... Amid mounting criticism, President Francisco Sagasti is promising there will be more ICU beds. No word, though, on the medical staff needed to run them. Se han incorporado 196 camas en las últimas dos semanas y se añadirán 350 más en las próximas dos semanas. And while the promise of more beds will be a relief to many, hope may be distant and fading. No vaccine has yet arrived in Peru. Isa Suarez, CNN. Thank <laughs> you.